help me out in what I call the program. There is no ooze, I'm afraid, but um, it's all happy music, very rhythmical music, very music to make you feel in a positive mood. That was Celebratio by Mr. Carl Jenkins, who's a Welsh composer. He was written for a wedding and obviously a very celebration event that was. As the next piece to the very famous Ave Maria by Franz Schubert. Such a popular piece at weddings. It really is a beautiful, beautiful piece. If you do sing yourself, I'm sure you might have sung this piece. Don't sing yourself. You might want to have sung this piece. I don't know. But it's a lovely piece. Arranged for the organ. Ave Maria by Franz Schubert. Claude Dacan, organist of the Chapel Royal in Paris, left some really very fine, happy pieces, very as we are, in happy hour. The Noel number six is so rhythmical, so exciting, and you've got basically crisp sounds from the organ, the, the big reeds of the grand organ, and then the more gentler sounds from the positive, but not actually so gentle, but very crisp mixtures and then different, different sounds. The French Baroque organ was a very colourful instrument, very, very different from the English Baroque. So the Noel number no. six, to get you maybe into, start getting into that festive mood by Monsieur Claude Dacan.
very much. That piece of music by Dak Hand didn't use the pedals very much, but the next piece is purely for the pedals, and it's just literally called Holiday for Pedals. To me, that would imply your feet have a rest, but not in his case, Gordon Young. He implies that your, your feet work like the clappers, actually, in this piece. So, Holiday for Pedals by Gordon Young. Indeed, tribute to Louis James Alfred Le Fermavelli, the great French organist who was organist of Saint-Sulpice in Paris for many, many years. He was born on February the 13th in 1817 and died in 1817.
had a few espressos, that helps to play that piece. It really does <laughs> really go for it. That, of course, was Dance of the Hours by Mr. Poncelli. Gives me great pleasure to introduce somebody we all know well, the president of the Spreckles Organ Society. He's going to tell you about what we do here at the Spreckles Organ. Please give a warm hand to Rhonda Fields. Thank you, Sarah. We're delighted to have you here uh, to spend part of your Sunday afternoon in San Diego and Balboa Park with us. I uh, wonder, well, on behalf of the City of San Diego, Park and Recreation Department, and the Spreckles Organ Society, we welcome each one of you to uh, Sunday afternoon in the park at the Organ Pavilion, and we hope you'll come back as often as you can. <laughs> That was Alligator Cruel by Thomas Fats Waller. He was a very happy man, apparently. He used to sing in his recordings, but apparently he couldn't sing for very long because he would start laughing. <laughs> he's, when he looks, and you see pictures of him, he's a very bubbly, rather a rotund character. But bubbly music, such great music, Alligator Cruel. I can see some beautiful dogs here this afternoon, right in the front row here on, on my right. Beautiful dogs. It reminds me that um, every year in April, thinking about animals, we have our bark in the park. <laughs> and it's, the concert is for uh, raising money for the Humane Society of San Diego. And we'll be doing that again this coming year. I just seeing um, Kerry come on stage with a camera took my concentration away. We're doing something actually. Next weekend we're releasing a new DVD of the great organ in Methuen, which is one of, it's a fascinating organ. It's the first concert organ that was, that was uh, built in the United States. It's actually a German organ that came over in the 1850s by ship, put into the Boston Music Hall, stayed there about 20 years, and then was dismantled because there was a conflict between the organ and the orchestra. Complicated story, actually an amazing story. Then it was re-erected in a beautiful hall in Methuen, Massachusetts, and we do the story of that. We're also going to be doing the story of this great organ too. It's a very fine organ. There's so much history with this organ. So what we've been doing is filming a lot of concerts, doing lots of interviews, and next year we'll be releasing that. It's called Tour Bus Goes to San Diego. So that's my other half better half. Yeah, cool. Cut out with me, he's a saint, isn't he? <laughs> Another happy piece, a very, very happy piece of music. It is a real good samba rhythm. I love rhythms of music. I mean, you know, Bach had a good sense of rhythm. I mean, they say Bach invented rock. True. 
you could put a good drummer, he's a good drummer too, but a good drummer to Bach and you could really feel that swing. Anyway, Bach didn't write Brazil. <laughs> I don't think he did anyway. afternoon. Certainly not cold. Um, I'm actually not going to play the tour bus scene because I decided I'd play it next week because we're going to release a DVD next week so you'll hear that then if you're here. So I'm going to play another happy piece. It is the Toccata by Charles Marie Vidor. He was organist as I said earlier, after Louis James Alfred Le Fervavelli, he was organist of the great church of saint saul Peace, the five manual organ. He was never officially appointed organist. It's an interesting story. He was on trial for a while, and, but they, they never confirmed it, and he stayed there just a mere 63 years. So anyway, the Toccata is the final movement from the Fifth Organ Symphony, known as the Wedding Toccata, so that's why I've put it in, it's for a happy occasion. Some of you might have used it already, or you might be getting married. It is a good piece to consider if you are getting married, and you're getting married in a church where there's a good organ because it's a thundering good piece for when you go out. I'm sure you will know it. It's been used at many a royal wedding, known as, a, as the, the wedding to Carter. Vidor didn't call it the wedding to Carter, but it's been used because it's so appropriate for that glorious and uplifting moment when they pronounce husband and wife, everybody claps and bang, straight into the music. So if you're planning on getting married, 
have a think. Charles Marie Vidal, Toccata from the Fifth Organ Symphony.
indeed, thank you. I actually do have that very piece on a CD called Classic Power, which is just available now. And after the concert, I'll be there and uh, I'd love to meet some of you if you have time. If you also have time, come up into the building and go into the building as some absolutely wonderful photographs on the wall of the building coming to life way back in 1914. You can only see these photographs here, or if you purchase the history book which has just come out in the last few months. Absolutely adorable book of music, some fascinating facts about this organ. So go into, into the building, have a look. You can see the organ console, which I play if you're interested. You can walk upstairs and see some of the 4,500 organ pipes. I do promise you I won't be playing so you can safely look in that zone. It will be a quiet zone at that time. So enjoy seeing, seeing the pipes. A lot of people don't realize this whole building is organ. This is the soundboard of the organ. Up there is just pipes. It's just amazing. People go, wow, look at that. And it's just, it is fascinating to have a look. So. That is it for this afternoon. It is tradition to finish with the national anthem. That is what I'm going to do now. And every Sunday at 2 o'clock, there's a concert here, rain, hail, or snow. We are always here. So if you have time, come back and see us. We'd love to see you again. I invite you to stand for the national anthem. See if you can sing louder than the largest outdoor organ in the world. Don't worry, I'm not singing. I'm just playing the organ. But see if you can outdo me on the instrument that would be lovely anyway thank you so much for coming do take care of yourselves good afternoon and god bless
children come in, I guess, get the elections up. Good afternoon and welcome to another concert on San Diego's unique and historic Sprinkles Outdoor Organ. My name is Dale Sorsen and I'm the Associate Organ Curator. First time visitors are often interested in a brief history of this great facility. Both the organ and the building were a gift to the sugar heirs, Adolf and John D. Spreckles. The organ was first played on New Year's Eve, ushering in 1915 at the opening ceremonies of the Panama, California exhibition that was held here in the Wall Park. The instrument was built by the Austin Organ Company of Hartford, Connecticut. When originally installed, it contained 46 ranks. Now the subsequent editions contain 73 ranks, so over 4,500 pipes. The largest pipe is 32 feet in length and the smallest about the size of a pencil. All the sounds you hear are natural sounds produced by compressed air energizing the pipe, or in the various cases of percussion, accident, actual instruments being struck by organ mechanisms. There's no amplification or electronic tone generation whatsoever. These programs are presented each week throughout the year at this time by the City of San Diego Park and Recreation Department in cooperation with the Spreckles Organ Society. Spreckles Organ Society operates in the gift shop here on the West Colonnade, where you can find unique things here only available here. Good time to start your Christmas shopping or continue it. Uh, you'll be hearing more about that later in the program. Or to note, the uh, organ is basically all original condition. Uh, been in operation now 93, going at 94 years. Our recitalist this afternoon is our very fine civic organist, Dr. Carol Williams. Carol brings a wealth of musical expertise and experience to the position. Wonderful music, we're used for a grand treat. Just looking at the organ. Yeah. There was a time when there was talk in the city of just making this a parking lot. Yeah, nobody's interested in organ concerts and we'll tear it down and, and make a parking lot out of it. And some wonderful civic minded people got together and said, oh, no, you don't. And the Sparkles Organ Society was formed 21 years ago. And, and one of its primary goals was to preserve this great organ was a gift, as you probably know, in 1915 from the Spreckles brothers, who were the sugar people. And they gave this as a gift to the city that it would always be for free concerts for people from all over the world. So that's why we welcome, uh, welcome our visitors as well as our local San Diegans. It's a gift for everybody. So we work to program this uh, organ as well as preserve it and also to promote it so that people know that it's here uh, for their enjoyment. Uh, we do some fundraising to uh, further this mission. For example, we raise funds to supplement our civic organist salary. The city spends a modest amount of money on the salary for the organist, and we more than double that. And why do we do that? To get you a really outstanding civic organist so that when you come down here, you're really going to hear some good music and not just somebody who <coughs> um, plays as best they can. And, and this can happen in some civic jobs. So we're delighted to have Carol and her predecessors been wonderful organists here for your enjoyment. We do youth education. I was coming by the pavilions just yesterday afternoon, or Friday actually, and the stage was full of young people. We have a thing called Fifth Grade in the Park in San Diego where youngsters are bussed in from all over the county. One of their stops on the museum stops and so on is to come here and we have an organist, a guest organist, who comes in and plays a, a simplified program aimed at young people. We have lecture by the uh, curator of this organ, the guy who takes care of it. He explains how a pipe organ works. Uh, they play different stops so they get an idea of the kinds of sound that are in a pipe organ. And we promote not only the literature and love of the pipe organ, but also for fine music overall. As we know, there is less and less music in, in the schools these days, and we're trying to help fill the gap uh, as one more of our mission services. 
We have youth scholarships. Every year we give scholarships to up-and-coming young organists, and we present them at our summer festival. And in the summer, from mid-June to the end of August, we have a summer organ festival, and we bring artists from all over the world. Carol is our artistic director, and the program committee with which she works are just now presenting a series of proposed artists for next summer. And I've looked at the list, and they're really outstanding, some people from all over the world. And I want to invite you to come back if you're in the area anytime between mid-June and the end of August. In addition to Sundays at 2, we have Monday nights at 7.30. And the little lights that are embedded all throughout this Oregon Pavilion, and the atmosphere is just magical, and it's all free. Um, we don't charge for any of the programs. We, we survive by donations to take care of these costs. This, this summer organ festival, just to give you an idea, that alone costs $60,000. So that means you got to sell a lot of t-shirts, got to sell a lot of CDs, postcards, and so on, and have a lot of donations. It's, it's a challenge, but we do it as a labor of love because there's so many people who enjoy it. The summer organ festival alone, we have 24,000 people show up every summer here. Over 2,000 a Monday night. And it's just really fun. People bring dinners and picnic uh, suppers and their friends and we have a grand time. So you be sure to come. Now, you're, if you, any of the kind of thing that I've mentioned to you is of interest to you and you're interested in helping, there are two or three ways you could do it. One is become a member. A member of the Sparkles Organ Society. It's only 25 bucks and, and up you get 10 percent as a discount to the gift shop over here you get uh, invitation to special events you get our, our newsletter quarterly that tells you all the things that we're involved in and invites you to special things that that we're arranging keeps you up to date on what's going on and you become a part of the mission of this society to further this organ you can also uh, as you leave you'll see gold boxes at each of the doors we invite you to make a contribution you would like and all the money that you may donate comes back right to you the donations are to provide programming for our audiences so any donations you will actually get in benefits services and program in the future and then lastly I invite you to take a look at the gift shop over here to your right uh, there are items there that you can only get here nowhere else in the world can you get the CDs of this organ uh, note cards, a DVD made for us by PBS, tells about the organ. There's a wonderful history book here that has just come out, underwritten by one of our trustees. It shows when the organ was being built in 1914 and brings you up to the present day. A complete history book. Uh, I love this Christmas Carol CD I'll mention to you. It was done by our past uh, civic organist, Robert Plimpton. Special arrangements of wonderful Christmas music on this organ. And then Carol has some CDs as well to the left up there of different organs around the world. So come and take a look on your way to come inside in the back after the concert. The uh, hallway is open full of photographs, historic things. You can go up and you can look into the organ chamber and see some of the 4,500 pipes that are up there. Come and take a look. We'd love to have you uh, enjoy this with us. So thank you again for being here this afternoon. We're delighted to share this music with you. We invite you to become one of us.